So the question we're going to answer today are then what are these transmissibilities? Okay. And so I'll just write them down. T in the x direction is in, in terms of say i plus a half j is equal to kx i plus a half j delta y i j h over mu dw x. So remember, remember our we defined T early on as we were talking about 1D case, it was K A mu BW delta X. Right? So now we have two dimensions, delta X and Y. And the reason this delta Y I J H is just A. And the reason being is if I were to say draw if I were to draw um, the grid block IJ and right now we're talking about the flux going from IJ to I plus 1J right? I plus 1J so we're defining the transmissibility here at the I plus a half J boundary well, the area, remember, is, is it's into the board, right? But in this case, so the area we're interested in is sort of that area. Right? But since now we allow, allow we, you know, we allow delta y to vary, because we have a two-dimensional resolute, if we allow delta y to vary, then this is delta y, right? And this is h. So then the area is delta y i j times h. So, so that's the transmissibility in the x direction. Of course, we have this kx i plus a half j. And this is just our inner block permeability where we're going to allow for both variations in permeability and variations in delta x and y. This is your depth. Uh, I guess it's not showing up that well. That's sort of the depth into the board. Right? Sorry, that it, it looked fine on my screen, but yeah. So it's it's the depth into the board, right? So we have a two-dimensional reservoir, but we still have a depth into the board, and that's h. Well, it, it, it could potentially, right? I mean, uh, this again, I only drew two grid blocks in a, in a two-dimensional reservoir, so if I drew a few more, oh gosh, I get rid of that. If I drew a few more, right? I could, there's, there's nothing. I have, the, I have the freedom to change delta y just the same way I had the freedom to change delta x in 1D, right? I don't have a, so, you know, our reservoir could look something like this, right? So we have varying delta x and y. And the reasons we want to do that are the same as the reasons in 1D, right? I mean, or, or even more important in 2D is that there could be some feature that we want to locally refine around. Could be a fracture, could be a well. So our answer will be more accurate the smaller the grid blocks are. So back over here, uh, we're, we're going to define the inner block um, permeability in, in the x direction. It should look familiar.
So it's exactly what it was before in 1D. It's just now we, we use Kx instead of K because you could potentially, in, a, in an anisotropic case, you could have two permeabilities, one in the x direction, one in the y direction. I guess uh, that just made me realize, you know, there is another assumption in this in this equation, and the assumption is that the grid has been oriented such that the permeability tensor uh, is zero in the off-diagonal components, right? So. We could always, we can, you can actually have uh, the off diagonal, you know, really it's a permeability tensor, right? So really the equation is in a, in a vector, in a vector form, the equation is the divergence of the permeability tensor right, over u dw times the gradient of pressure. So, and that that tensor could have, in, well, you know, in 2D, it's going to have kx, ky, but in general, it could also have kxy, kxy. And in that case, the equation would look a little different. This equation would look a little different. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah, well, we've made. So you, you can always, um, you can always rotate the permeability tensor to a specific set of principal axes that make the off diagonal zero. So that's the, the, that's called a. You could do it like a spectral decomposition or eigenvalue decomposition if you know what that is. And in that, so then there's some principal directions. Okay, in which the off-diagonal entries are zero. We're just assuming that we know what those principal directions are, and we overlaid our grid in that direction, so that x and y perfectly line up with them. Right? Which you can always do. It's not always practical, but you can do that. Right? So we're not, you know, there's not an assumption in here that's not that you, you know, something that's not physical. You can actually always do this. So anyway, so our grid aligns with the principal directions of the permeability tensor such that we just have kx and ky. And so in this case, the inner block permeability is that in the x direction. And likewise, in the y, we're going to have inner block transmissibility. Here? Yeah. Like that? Thank you. When you said top, I was looking up there. You should have said numerator. Of the, uh, of the equation I was looking, uh, writing. You know, I, was writing, I was working on this equation, and you said top, which made me look way up there. Okay. 
So the only difference here, you know, we, now we're using KY, and then the area now is delta X. And again, it's for the same reason, right? So in this case, if we go back to my sketch, in this case now we're talking about you know, the, the transmissibility in that direction right, for the flux in that direction. So this would have delta X. This is still H. Right. And no surprise what KY is. So then, you know, if if you have, maybe I'll just go to the next page. So if your if your reservoir is homogeneous. Isotropic and uniform. And what I mean by uniform is the grid blocks are square. That is delta y equals delta x. And in that case, all of the inner block transmissibilities equal each other. 